to the front sacristy. In the front sacristy is what we need for Mass. So let's just start here. Uh, these cabinets have uh, what we need to celebrate Mass. It says sacred vessels, and that's exactly what it is. We have chalices, we have ciboriums at the top, and then we have a chalice. This is called a paten, as well as this, in which a paten is basically a ciborium without the lid, okay? And so this is, this is how we celebrate Mass. Uh, I think each one of the priests have their own chalice that they, they use nowadays. This is called a lavabo, and uh, at the moment we're not using this, but typically the, uh, the altar server would hold this and he'd have a crude of water and then a towel over his arm, and the priest would come and, and the altar server would pour water over and he would just kind of symbolize the washing of the hands uh, right before the consecration. Uh, and, uh, uh, but right now what we do is the priest physically walks, walks over to a bowl that has sudsy water in it and washes his hands. Uh, and this goes back to our ancient history of where the congregation, the people of God, what they brought to the church was their offering. It could be a cow, it could be a pig, it could be wheat, it could be uh, whatever it is, it could be eggs. Whatever they had uh, of wealth, it, that's what they brought to the church. Okay. Purificator is uh, this, this cloth in which hopefully one of these days we'll be able to receive the blood of Christ again. And that is how we purify each time someone receives the blood of Christ. So these are just the extra towels that the priest washes his hands. And so let me pull this over. Remember back in the chapel, I said that the Luna would go in the monstrance. This is called a monstrance. And it is where the body of Christ will be placed and then it is placed on the altar at the moment now. We, we typically don't do it in the chapel because we're doing it in the larger church where people can spread out. But this is called a monstrance. And it just has a beautiful image and the rays of light coming out when the body of Christ is placed in it. And it's where we have adoration. It's when we, we are in the presence of Christ and we just sit, adore, and be present. And uh, in one of the books that Frank Saint, I mean, Pope Francis wrote one of his very first books. He said, to imagine when you're in adoration, not you gazing upon Jesus, but that Jesus is gazing upon you. I always struggled with adoration until I read that book because that is a beautiful imagery of uh, being present with Christ and knowing the significance that he's there with me. Uh, here we have the unconsecrated bread and the items that we need for uh, Mass. In this drawer door, we have our liturgical books. The, the, the sanctuary, or the san sac 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 oh man, I can't believe what I'm trying to say. So well, I'll, I'll think of it later. Uh, this is our readings of the year. We have a three year uh, cycle. And so each one, we are actually in year two. So this is volume, volume two, okay? Um, and then this is just storage and we have the, these are vestments for the altar and the credence table. Now over here is an interesting item. Whenever something is blessed, it can never be thrown away. If you have a rosary that you've prayed with for a while but it's broken, you can't just throw it in the trash can. Uh, anything that is blessed has to go into the ground or it has to be burned, burned back up uh, to be with the, with the smoke going uh, up to, uh, to, to the heavens. Well, this is a funnel, as you can see, and the tubing that goes down from the funnel goes straight into the ground. 
so that if we have an incident of uh, needing to throw away anything that has already been blessed, for example, uh, the body of Christ and the priest wasn't able to consume it all, then we would pour it in this funnel and then follow it with much water so that we know it's securely, safely in the ground. Now, if you were to have a rosary or something, a book or something that you have had blessed and it needs to be um, disposed of, then you need to make sure that wherever you bury it, it is not gonna be disturbed. So you wouldn't wanna bury it in your garden because you're gonna break that garden up the next year. The next thing I wanna point out is our incense. When I was talking about the flames, if you were to burn something and the, and the uh, smoke goes up to heavens, that's what the incense signifies. And incense is used in the church in a very, um, uh, not ordinary times, but uh, uh, sacred almost times. Uh, the Easter Vigil is a beautiful example of when we use incense. Another one is uh, at funerals. The, um, the church will incense the casket. It first blesses with holy water the casket, and then as the casket is being, right before the casket is being let out, then Father will incense the, the casket with the incense. Beautiful, beautiful imagery. And that goes back to our ancient times when sacrifices were on the altars, they would, uh, they would like kill a ram, uh, and then the blood would be drained. Half of it would consecrate the altar. The other half would be thrown on the people. And then the, the uh, body itself would be burned so that the smoke is pleasing to God. Okay, that's how, that's how the imagery comes. All right, uh, in here is our old safe. Uh, it, we don't lock it, we, we don't close it anymore, but it houses a lot of the things that we, we need uh, for Mass. A lot of the things that the priests need to travel, um, they have traveling kits in there. Some of our books that, um, when we got the new books for the new translations, and some of the rights have been changed, but we don't throw away our old books. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've missed. I don't think so. <clears throat> okay, so I have mentioned Father Tierney already, but I wanted to point out um, this plaque that is placed uh, in the sacristy. It says, of your charity, pray for the soul of very Reverend Thomas F. Tierney, who erected this church, born November the 28th, 1853, uh, in Pennsylvania, died June the 22nd, 1901. He was uh, at Holy Name for 26 years. Mm, he was at Holy Name for 16 years, but he was 26 years in the priesthood but he is buried here. And that's gonna be the next thing that we do as we travel out. We're going to go, this is uh, the second part of the sacristy. And again, it's the things that, it, it has storage for what we need for the masses. Uh, we have the albs for the altar servers. We have in this one are the, um, uh, what we place on the altar and it's the, uh, liturgical season uh, colors. Uh, yes, this is uh, a crucifix that is, uh, was dedicated to the church in honor of Jeanette Burton. Uh, and I actually take this into the children's liturgy so that we have a crucifix when Casey does children's liturgy. I hope you are following that if you have young people. This is the last thing. And here is the full vestments that our priests use and our deacons. And remember I told you I was going to point out the pink vestment? Let's watch and see if any of the priests wear this, this coming Sunday of Advent, which is the third Sunday of Advent, and the color is rose. I'm sorry, it's not pink, it's rose. So, so we'll, we'll see.